What are you thinking about? Um, I'm trying to understand the uh, computation of something in an approximate way. So it's, um, so it's a kind of math problem. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's based on some physics model. And um, you have to compute the properties of this. Um, well, it's, this is a model that um, was proposed by some condensed matter physicists that has some properties and that um, uh, make you think that it's going to be related to a gravitational system. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to understand the computation of certain properties in this model. Um, and I, the, and is it like that you are checking this model or, or uh, um, redo what he has done or, or do, uh, do you want to use it? Um, eventually, I want to use it, but right now I'm uh, trying to understand it and understand the, uh, the computations. Uh, and, uh, so one can do some computations numerically, uh, and uh, we observed a certain property numerically, and we are trying to understand analytically, or just with the formulas, exactly where it's coming from. Um, and do you succeed? I haven't succeeded yet. <laughs> I've been thinking about this for a, for a few days. <laughs> You're thinking about this for a few days? Yeah, to match these two computations. Uh, so what is the problem? Um, well, this particular... Well, it, it's a model of uh, interacting fermions, so interacting particles. Uh, but um, or inter uh, More precisely, I should say, interacting quantum mechanical degrees of freedom. Uh, so interacting qubits, if you wish. Um, and um, they um, they interact with some random interactions, and at low temperatures they have properties that uh, are similar to properties that black holes have. The thermodynamics of this model is similar to the thermodynamics of black holes, in particular of uh, black holes that are near extremal. So when you have black holes that carry charge, they um, there is a limit to their mass, so their, their mass cannot be too small. Um, so uh, the mass can be arbitrarily big. So for fixed charge, the mass can be very big, but there is a lower limit on the mass. Yeah, you explained and, it yesterday. Yeah, well, then uh, when you apply, when you reach to this this lower limit on the mass, um, uh, the temperature of the black hole becomes uh, very small, um, and the black hole uh, develops. Um, an approximate sort of scaling symmetry. Scaling symmetry means that um, physics looks the same at uh, various energy scales, uh, and the geometry also uh, develops this uh, approximate symmetry where you can be uh, the physics at different distances from the horizon looks uh, essentially the same. So if you if you are I don't know, one meter from the horizon, it looks some, some way you go half a meter. Everything looks the same except that the energy gets rescaled. Um, and um, so in this extreme of black holes, the symmetry is realized in a very special way. Uh, and this model seems to realize it also in that special way, so I'm trying to understand the connection between these two things. Um, in particular, uh, the symmetry uh, determines how the specific heat of the black hole behaves, um, um, or how the entropy of the black hole behaves. And, uh, I'm trying to understand this feature. I'm trying so to understand it in the simplest way and from symmetries. But right now I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to compute what the answer is in a particular model without necessarily using the symmetries. There is some, some way of computing it using the symmetries and a direct way of computing it and trying to understand the relation between the two. Well, this is a bit technical. Yeah, yeah it's very technical. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I guess in general I could say that one of the goals of uh, physics or the, the work we do is trying to understand how the, the role of symmetries, how symmetries uh, govern uh, different behaviors. Uh, because sometimes uh, you look for universal answers, so you can have some models and the details of the models can vary, uh, but sometimes you will find that uh, the answers in the end are all similar. And some features are similar, some features are different. And Usually, uh, there is some symmetry that uh, determines the the common parts of the answers, so the, the, the things that are common to all models. And that's uh, the thing that is interesting to understand in general, because uh, 
doesn't depend on the details of the model, but just uh, on some more generic features. Uh, any moment, there's a, a colleague of you coming here. Mm -hmm. can, can you tell me who's coming? Yeah, uh, the person has, that's coming is Daniel Jefferies, who's a professor at Harvard. And so we worked on a paper recently, and we are discussing some further some other ideas. So the, the paper was about the connection between entanglement and geometry. And this is something a group of us has been thinking about, and uh, we, and we are just uh, going to discuss this further. Um. Well, I'll just wait for him. We are doing this uh, reconstruction from all the local operators here. Right? Well, at least yes. in principle, all the local operators everywhere are sufficient. But in right? this case, because you have UN symmetry, I think the mirrors are kind of local. It's like in a thermal field level. Where, well, I don't, well, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure if I got the point. <coughs> well, you can go to well, the I mean, like for in, in the entanglement wedge for reconstruction, uh, I think we expect probably to, to use the modular Hamiltonian to express. Well, yeah, I don't know. are the same as the operator. So in this situation, they are the same as the other operators, right? Yes. But uh, when we do, when we want to do the Rindler reconstruction, right, we are interested in expressing everything in terms of operators defined yes. here. Right? Yes. I mean, in this case, it's a little weird because they are local, so it's what you will naively think that you will get. But no, but if we do the mirrors of these operators, we'll get. Um, we get operators which yes, are here, yes. right? Yes, I was thinking that maybe if, you, if we have the global representation, maybe we can express the operators which are not in this region as the mirrors of the operator. So, okay, well, well, I mean the operator. Okay, so the mirrors of these operators are operators which will act here, but they will look like they act outside. Mm, no, no, they they will be the operators that act outside because for doing the mirror construction, you will have to use the global state, right? Yes. Not just the density. I mean, you cannot define them using the density matrix here. Yes. You have to define them using the full state, right? Yeah, this is similar to what we discussed yeah, the other yeah, day. It was also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah it's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Because you need the full state, although the formula for the mirrors looks like it. Yeah, yeah it looks like they refer only to these operators, but because it's you have the full state, really yeah, yeah. defines the operators acting yeah. on the other yeah. side. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I wanted to see if there was some reason why we expect entanglement with wave reconstruction to happen or not, and maybe, well, yeah. Because, I mean, the, the formula that we proposed could look a little funny, the, the one where you express in terms of modular float operators. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know if there is some way to check whether that's, that should be true in principle. Um, well, we could <coughs> check whether it's true Sorry practice, to interrupt, right? but do you, do you want to move to the other, uh, other room? Is that uh, e uh, okay? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Right, I mean, like, if, for, for, for instance, you don't expect to Rindler reconstruct the operators outside the Rindler wedge. Yes. 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 yes, I mean, you know, with entanglement wedge, it's hard to see what you, yeah. yeah. I mean, but... Yes. Something like... Well, I mean, you're giving... But I mean, in the paper that, that Arlo and she, Dan Shi and yeah. uh, I mean, Shi Dong and uh, Aaron Wall wrote, they wrote some kind of formula, although it's a formula that's not very explicit exactly. Oh, oh, what you mean in that last paper? In the last paper, which I didn't entirely understand actually. Okay, I, think, I mean, I think that for my understanding, the last paper, we, we, call, we could sum it, up, sum it up in two lines from our perspective, which is just to say that if you are. So if you add with a unit, so I think what, what they are saying is that if you have the entanglement wedge, so this is R, 
B and this is. So well, I think what they are saying is that if you act with a unitary here, a unitary of a local operator here, this doesn't change the density. This doesn't change the. Okay, so first the relative entropy of. So it doesn't change the relative entropy in the bulk of R B. So it doesn't change the relative. So the relative entropy in the bulk of R in the boundary of R doesn't change. Yep. So then they conclude that this operator commits with all the operators here. I think that's all they say. In some sense. Yes. So what, what, what formula do you see? Do you say? Well, maybe. Okay, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if I saw it in a paper. In the paper, or if Dan Harlow said it to me now, actually. actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't very explicit anyway. Like he didn't write the formula on the board, but he said something like, "If you knew the mapping between." So somehow he thought if you knew the the full mapping, like the global mapping, then you could get a kind of formula. The but global mapping, you mean if you can reconstruct the operators here from from the things everywhere, everywhere. yeah, okay, something yeah. like that. Yeah. I think that was roughly the content, but oh, okay. it was a brief discussion. So, you know. mm -hmm. well, yeah, I mean, I think I mean they have a formula in the appendix in in the ADH appendix. Yeah, it might be that's so, yeah, where, where they use. This is way of getting the effective members by using, like Tomita Takesaki, something like that. And he was, I mean, the quantum error correction formula was very similar to that. Okay, I see. Well, let's see, for, for our purposes of uh, trying to see whether the formula we propose in our paper works, I mean, if we could just use the Cassini worth uh, discussion yeah. <laughs> and, and really check it, right? Right, right, right. You, 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 you mean you maybe. use the modular flow to evolve the operators in the interior and see what? Yeah, what, what, what the kernel? You get, yeah, what basically. kernel you get? Yeah. Or yeah. maybe there is a formal way to do it. You don't have yeah. to do it. When yeah, I mean, I try to. I mean, yeah. I'm not very. Good. I mean, okay. I think the, the problem is that the formula is in the lattice, and they say that this kernel. So you have like two or three kernels, and at the end you end up getting one kernel, which is you have like the x, the x's <coughs> and the p's. They say that uh, like they, they are not well defined in, in the continuum, but then when you combine them, they are def well defined or something. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, I mean, it's a little tricky. Yeah. But in the end, isn't the kernel defined in terms of some Green's functions and the yeah, inverses? Yeah, it's pretty, and... pretty explicit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, but you have to do the inverse of a Green function and well, I mean, and take the log and all these things. So, yeah. so the, I mean, they do it for the fermions and they can do it because they, you can construct the resolvent. But... Mm -hmm. Do, do we remember what the formula is? Or for, for the Fermi, for in general? The yeah. general but formula in terms of green, so I've forgotten. But I think it has yeah, something like log, I think it has something like log of c minus one, minus c minus one to the min, minus one, and I think maybe here you have something like x, and then something like over c minus one or something. This is, okay, so, so this, this may be the one, this, I think this may be the one for, I think this is one. Okay, so for the scalar fields, you have a scalars and, and a bosons, and I think this. I mean, the, the the fields and the momentum, and I think this will be the one for the fields. Okay. So uh, where C C. So this is the modular Hamiltonian field basis, basically. Yes, but you, I mean you have this uh, for the. I mean, so you have a contribution from the fields, and one from the momentum. Right. Right. Oh, right. I see. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and and this is I think is the square root of x p. Where, right. Yeah, yeah. So x is the, the two point function of the oh, scale of the fields. Thought about the large mass one a little bit, like hoping that maybe it would simplify mm -hmm. the well, the large mass limit x and p become closer to being local, but mm -hmm. it's a difficult starting point. How do you go from this one to the formula for the mm, for Lin the Rinder wedge? That's a good question. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 I even asked Cassini, and he said, oh, in I, saw, oh, I see. I no, thought that was uh, <laughs> supposed to be easy. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, like, I asked Cassini, I mean, because, I mean, for, I mean, that would be a good place to start just to see to what extent these formulas for an arbitrary region reproduce the Rinder formulas close to the boundary mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the region. But he said, well, it, of course, it has to be the case. But, but he didn't know how to do that. No. So, yeah, I'm interested. I mean, like the kernel should be local when, in some sense, when you apply it to operators which are close to the boundary of their region. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to 
Well, I guess if, if one Hopefully could show follow. that it obeys a certain differential equation, or yeah, of course it's. Uh, yeah. yeah. But maybe there's a. Some Why does it have this form? I mean, I thought it should involve uh, some matrices that you construct from correlators inside and also outside. No, it's only based no. on stuff inside. Yeah. Because you, you basically, the only input you, that you want to put is that you, it has to Yeah, be of course, yeah, it has to represent yeah. Let me see. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, when you... Uh, yeah, I mean, I was thinking, yeah, I, th I think th there, is some, there could be some implicit equation, but, yeah. The, yeah. I mean, I mean, okay. uh, uh, yeah, I mean if, 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 if you compute something like the, the I mean, if you compute just powers of the density matrix, then this is some calculation where you just mm -hmm. insert some operators into the replicated geometry. Well, that's, that's computing but, correlators, right? But when th this is a formula for the Hamiltonian, so. Yeah, but you, but you would like to compute the, maybe the commutator with the modular Hamiltonian and then from that get. Something like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah maybe, maybe, maybe you could compute the commutator with rho to the n, and then try to continue n. Maybe, maybe this is not going to be useful. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but, yeah, per perhaps this continuation is going to be impossible in practice. Like, you, you won't get an analytic yeah. formula or something. Yeah, I mean, and about that, I think it classically is very clear, but quant I mean, well, you want to get some quantum contribution. So you are, you are not only changing the geometry, but also changing the state. Mm -hmm. So it, that's a little trickier <coughs> to see how, how it yeah. plays a role. So which, what are you talking about? It is, it, well, I mean, when you, do, when you go to, to the replica geometry, then you will have a, a contribution from N, which comes from the real bulk modular Hamiltonian, and a contribution. Ah, of course, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, in, yes, in gravity, you yes, mean, yes, 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 in but, gravity. Uh, but he, here the problem was to do this in quantum field theory. Yes, right? I agree. Because, uh, that, that was Im Im because this was a bulk computation in the quantum yeah. filter in the bulk, so yes, yes. we wanted to... Uh, I, mean, I mean, I guess, okay, I guess that... Yeah. yeah I, mean, I, I mean, to compute the log normally, what people do is to have this, this integral representation when you want to compute the log for the relative entropy, for example. So maybe one... Yeah, I mean, that's something I was thinking too, like maybe... Maybe one can go to modular Fourier space somehow, and then things are simpler there. Which I, I mean, I think. Where is this weird space in some variable that you. Yeah. Yeah, and there's both. I mean, yeah. The only thing that relates. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean. I mean, the replica trick is not too hard because you can do, like, for the correlators, you can do the image method. But I guess doing it for an arbitrary region in ADS is pretty tricky. Yeah. Well, the simplest, I think, situation would be, uh, the simplest thing would be to see whether this can be related to a slightly more explicit formula and... Uh, I guess, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this formula is not very useful, so you should be, I mean, one should try to rederive it in a different way, probably. But, well, the, the formula is correct, and it's just that yeah. you can have the hope that it's rewritten in a simpler way. But <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs>
Well, they did cheer on for you. No, they didn't. Well, they didn't. Well, they didn't. Vamos a ver, para allá ahora. Para la derecha. No sé, derecha, re, derecha. Después es la derecha. Y ahora nos van a venir con el auto. Chicos, vénganse más cerca. 